Hey everybody, Home Slash Hunter here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showcasing a powerful Shadow Charizard team in the Open Great League that helps me climb up to 3215 ELO, good enough for number 51 in the world on today's leaderboards as of the time of recording. The team features a Guzzlord on the lead, Shadow for Alligator as the safe switch to bait out a potential Lickitung or Lantern, and Shadow Charizard as the closer. I do feel like this season, Shadow Charizard uses just fallen off, people not necessarily giving it the credit that it's due, but I had a ton of success with it and I still think it is very, very strong. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches. Hopping to the first match, picking up a bit of an awkward lead, leading the Guzzlord into Shadow Empoleon. I save switch into the Feraligator. I'm going to be firing off the Hydro Cannon here. It is going to be resisted, but importantly, it allows me to outpace. They send in Altaria. I'm going to farm up to a potential Ice Beam. Now, Ice Beam can be quite good on for Alligator, but personally, since I'm using it as a bait out for a potential Lantern, I want to have Crunch, as Crunch gives me a move that can hit for neutral there. I'm going to be able to make it to the Crunch first, the Altaria, and I do get the defense drop, which is quite nice. The Empoleon did take quite a lot of damage. They do have a move banked, but I'm more than happy to just commit a shield here as the Guzzlord, as Moonblast would hit for double super effective damage. I can farm down and exit with a lot of HP on the Guzzlord. Opponent is going to look to send back in the Empoleon. I believe they got one turn lag there on the switch in. That shouldn't have been charge attack priority. They should have been able to throw that one turn before, but it ends up being charge attack priority. I fire off the Dragon Claw. They shield and now up a shield. I can just send in Shadow Charizard. They do not want to see it in back and they resign the match. Tough lead in the next match, Guzzlord into Annihilate, I save switch into Shadow for Alligator. For Alligator does have a pretty nice matchup, my opponent is going to fire off the Night Slash, and by doing so, since I did get the one turn switch, unfortunately, I'm always going to be one fast move behind in this matchup. Hydro Cannon gets the shield, opponent is just going to be able to get the farm down as I faint right as I make the Hydro Cannon. I'm going to send in the Guzzlord, opponent is now going to send in Dugong, and Dugong is going to be met with the Crunch. I'm choosing to stay in this matchup because I know that one Icy Wind is not going to be enough to knock out here. So I'm more than happy to stay in here with the Guzzlord because I want to try and save shields for the Shadow Charizard. And now I can send in the Shadow Charizard opponent is going to be able to get a debuff onto the Zard, but I'm just going to shield and I am farming this thing down. These wing attacks are debuffed, but Charizard gets the farm down, exiting with a massive amount of energy and it's Skarmory in the back. Shadow Blast Burn has been debuffed. Opponent barely hangs on with the Skarmory. I'm looking to get the full farm down with the Charizard and leaving with back-to-back -back Blast Burns. This Pokemon is so much fun. Opponent realizes they do not have a win con, so they just don't shield, and we're able to take the win. Another match, another bad lead. Guzzlord into Skarmory. Again, I'm going to save switch into the Shadow for Alligator and throw after seven Shadow Claws. This is right before my opponent makes it to a Brave Bird, so I do want to land this damage before they're able to fire off a charge attack and switch out. Because now I can basically just KO them with a potential Dragon Claw or a Crunch later in the match. So very, very comfortable spot to be in there. They're going to send in Whizcash. Whizcash not able to pick up the knockout with the Mud Bomb. I'm going to fire off the Hydro Cannon. I do want to leave as little farm as possible, so I will throw one extra Shadow Claw because I'm expecting they're just going to no shield, and they do. Let's see what's in the back. It's a Swampert, and the Swampert does not get the farm down. The Mud Shot's not enough to KO. I make the Hydro Cannon, grab the shield, send in the Guzzlord. They realize I have a strong Skarmory counter on the back, and they resign the match. Great lead in the next match, leading the Guzzlord into the Umbreon. They safe switch into a Lickitung, so the opponent is completely core broken by Guzzlord. So after a couple tricky leads in a row, very, very happy to see the Lickitung. I'm going to fire off the Crunch and then wait for them to throw their energy. Ideally, I would like to be able to preserve the Guzzlord. The Guzzlord is very nice into the Umbreon, so I'm going to wait for them to throw and then switch into the Feraligator. And Feraligator will barely be able to outpace the Lickitung and Hydro Cannon will easily KO. And now if they send in the Umbreon, I'm not in a range where a foul play will KO, but they have something way spicier in the back. That is a level 50 Pachirisu being played in the open Grey League at leaderboard ELO. Props to the opponent. That is some insane spice. I am more than happy to just let this go. They have a ton of energy on the Pachirisu. They're going to send in the Umbreon. I'm going to fire off the Dragon Claw just to burn the clock. And then it's Shadow Charizard time. 
I do have to keep in mind the switch clocks are a bit misaligned here. I know that I can survive one foul play, so I'm always going to be no shielding first. This is going to be a very difficult end game. My opponent's win con in this match is going to be to stall the timer, grab both my shields, and snipe with the loaded thunder punch. So that is something I have to be very mindful of. The Dragon Claw Bait is able to get the shield, which is very, very huge. I'm going to be shielding up the foul play, and again, looking to bait. It's very, very tough to no shield versus Zard. I'm able to grab the shield, which is huge, and now I'm one away from the Blast Burn. They have the move loaded. I'm going to make the prediction. I click the Guzzlord, and there's the snipe. We click the Guzzlord before we see the switch. We do not get sniped by that Thunder Punch, and now I should be in a pretty good spot. My only lose condition is giving them too much farm on Umbreon. So I stop tapping and they stop tapping as well. As long as Umbreon can't get three Snarls, I'm in a good spot. And after the Volt Switch, they can't get three Snarls. They're only going to get two here. So they can send back in the Umbreon. They get two Snarls. I'm only one wing attack away from the Blast Burn. That got a bit complicated in the end game, but we predict the catch. We get it right. And Shadow Charizard moves us to 4-0 in the set. Looking for the 5-0, and what a lead. Oh my goodness. Guzzlord in a Lantern, the save switch into Annihilate, and I respond with the Shadow Charizard. They have built up to six. Almost no one is running Ice Punch anymore, but there's actually Ice Punch thrown, and this means that my opponent, if they want to, can win switch. However, the good news for me is that they're going to have to give up two shields to do so. So I'm more than happy to give up switch if my opponent is going to give both of their shields up. I can send in the Feraligator, shield once, and even though I've lost switch, it's not the end of the world. Because again, I have crunch on the Feraligator, so I have something that I can use to damage the Lantern. In comes the Lantern, I'm going to be firing off the crunch, and then looking to send in the Guzzlord, and we'll have to see what is their second Guzzlord counter. I throw a Shadow Claw in the back. It's Skarmory and up energy and up a shield. This is just a winning end game for Guzzlord. Guzzlord does very, very well here as we see Crunch does a lot of damage. So if I make it to two Crunches, I can just knock out the Skarmory and that Lantern's going to have a truly horrible day. And Guzzlord is going to be able to get there. It all comes down to does this KO. It's going to be really, really close. The Crunch does not knock out, but one more Dragon Tail does it. Back in comes the Lantern, I can make it to the Crunch, and now, after this, I just switch into the Feraligator to force them to throw their energy, and this is a one game. So I send in Feraligator, they fire off their energy, they need a Thunderbolt to KO here, they're forced to waste all that energy, in comes the Guzzlord, Dragon Tail down, we get the 5-0, and that takes us to 32-15 ELO. And now I'm going to be showcasing some selected games that I actually played before the 5-0, but that I just really found enjoyable. Moving into the next match, we see a very tough lead here. Guzzlord into the Shadow Claw Alolan Sandslash. You technically can stay in as the Guzzlord, but I'd rather switch out into the Feraligator. Feraligator just extremely flexible on the save switch. I do get baited with an Ice Punch, which is a bit unfortunate. Opponent sends in a regular Gligar, and that's actually a bit unfortunate for me. If it was the Shadow, they were not going to be able to tank that Hydro Cannon, whereas unfortunately they are the regular, so they are barely able to hang on. They go for the dig to pick up the KO. I can just get energy on to the Guzzlord. They can send back in the Sand Slash, but this is very comfortably in a range where a Crunch can knock out. An Ice Punch, it's going to do a lot of damage, but Guzzlord is very bulky. It has a monster HP stat, so I can now go for the Crunch and just put a lot of pressure on this final shield. The Crunch is going to connect. They get KO'd in the back. It's the battle of the fire and flying types. Shadow Charizard versus Talonflame. And the good news is the better one is going to win here. I'm going to go for the Dragon Claw bait. Realistically, I mean, I win the game whether I get this bait or not. But now I get to go for the incredibly, incredibly satisfying Shadow Blast Burn from Shadow Charizard. Down goes Talonflame. And we take the win. Moving into the next match, going up against M.E. Weedle, who is always a very difficult competitor to go up against. It's a Cresselia lead. And realistically, I shouldn't have stayed in here. Staying in here... Probably not the greatest idea, just because, unfortunately, if they have Moonblast, this is not a good spot to be as the Guzzlord. So I decide to aggressively pivot into the Charizard. My opponent is going to send in a Shadow Whizcash. Shadow Whizcash, this is a Shadow Blast Burn. Let's see that damage. It nearly picks up the one-hit KO. If I shield the Scald, I can farm down here. 
but he makes a devastatingly good bait. That's going to allow him to make it to the Scald right before he gets KO'd. I played to the CMB tie because I can force the final shield, but he's not on one HP. He withstands the one HP of damage through the shield and picks up the knockout. I send in for Alligator because I do want energy. In the back, it's going to be Skarmory, and I feel like there might be a little bit of play here, but it's gonna be a very difficult end game to execute. I send in the Guzzlord, and as long as I can get farm on my Feraligator, I should hopefully be in a winning position. So I will fire off the Crunch. The Crunch is going to connect, and it is going to be the Moonblast. Moonblast should just knock me out, but my opponent will go for an undercharge on the Moonblast. I get the farm down. Can I make it to the move? I cannot, and he is going to be able to get to the Brave Bird. Just a beautifully played game there. Oh my goodness. Tried to make it as close as I could, but GG's. We lead into a very rough matchup, leading Guzzlord into Shadow of Bomb of Snow. I'm gonna save switch into the Feraligator. Unfortunately, I do lag by a turn when I end up safe switching. So I end up being one full fast move behind, whereas typically I would only be one turn behind. I do commit the shield, I get baited with an Icy Wind, but it's not gonna matter. Two Shadow Hydros at minus one are still gonna be able to knock out a Shadow Iscash, so I can get the shield back. Feraligator's energy is just incredibly powerful. Feraligator is now gonna be met with the Shadow Mud Bomb. Shadow on Shadow, this should be enough to knock out, and it is, but I can send back in the Guzzlord. As you see, I'm not waiting my switch clock. I want to get rid of this Wiz Cash and give them no ability to save it for later. So I will get the full farm down. They can send in the Obama Snow, but Obama Snow is gonna be taking quite a lot of damage. Crunch from a Guzzlord does quite a bit, especially to a Shadow Obama Snow. The Crunch is going to connect. My opponent gets fully farmed down. What do they have in the back? They have a Shadow Swampert and this game is just a win. I can fire off the Dragon Claw, and then I just stay in and force them to throw energy. These Dragon Tails absolutely tearing through the HP of this Shadow Swampert. They're at back-to-back -back Hydros, but it's not going to matter. I can just send in the Shadow Charizard. I'm going to make the Dragon Claw when they make their back-to-back -back Hydros once again, and this will very, very comfortably KO. So a bit of a tricky game where they had two Water Types in the back, but were able to get the win. Picking up a fairly neutral lead in the next match, Guzzlord versus Altaria. Guzzlord can win the ones here, but in case there's a Lantern in the back, I do really need to switch out of this matchup eventually. So I will fire off the Dragon Claw. Dragon Claw is going to get the shield from the Altaria, and now I'm going to send in the Shadow for Alligator. They're in a range where I can threaten them even with a Hydro Cannon now. They have a lot of energy. I decide to commit the shield. It's the Sky Attack, and there it is right on cue. Lantern, and Lantern will be met with the Crunch. Crunch will connect. Unfortunately, no defense drop from the Crunch. I'm going to be able to fire off Crunch number two. This will not be enough to knock out, but it will get the opponent very low. The Crunch will connect. They do get a full farm down, but the good news is, is my Dragon Tail will be able to KO because the Dragon Tail will go through as they fire off the move, but I get denied. I get denied. Oh, that is so unfortunate. I decide just to aggressively switch into the Shadow Charizard and farm down because I want energy. In comes the Altaria. Altaria will be met with the Dragon Claw that looked like it was charge attack priority, and it is charge attack priority. I'm gonna commit the shield, and now it all comes down to what is in the back. Their timer is up, it's Gligar, and I lose by two turns. I make it to a Dragon Claw on charge attack priority, but I don't make the blast burn. A very unfortunate way to lose. Gligar, once I have taken that damage, is not a fabulous spot for me to be in, so unfortunately, we're not able to win the match. Hopping to the final match, we see an amazingly Guzzlord into Lickitung. Let's go. Opponent save switches into Shadow Gligar, and I don't have a great response to a Shadow Gligar save switch on this team. Now, Shadow Gligar, typically you would think, oh, I can just send in the Feraligator, but if you're behind even one turn, then Shadow Gligar just straight up wins the two shield for Shadow Feraligator. So I'm kind of forced to stay in here, which is not very comfortable. So I'm gonna tank one, shield one, and go for the crunch. I've done enough damage that this should knock out, and it does. And now, depending on what they send in, I'm probably going to want to look to pivot. They're not going to be sending in the Lickitung. Oh, they actually do send in the Lickitung. I stand corrected. They send in the Lickitung to absorb the energy. Lickitung will be met with Dragon Claw, followed by another Dragon Claw. And I'm just looking to apply as many charge attacks as I can in this matchup. Continuing to farm. Can I get there? No, I cannot. I get sniped by an Annihilate. And this could get tricky. 
in comes the Shadow Charizard. Charizard just gonna fire off the Dragon Claw. Shadow Dragon Claw does a lot of damage to Annihilate. Annihilate will commit the shield. Annihilate has so much energy, and I have a tough call to make. I decide to be brave. I'm calling the bait. It's the Night Slash. I can go for the Dragon Claw, and suddenly I see a win con in this match. I'm going to aggressively switch into the Feraligator. This is another really tough spot to be in. I call it again. It's another Night Slash. Unfortunately, I lag, so I'm not able to get the Shadow Claw through that would KO there because I lag by a turn, but I have enough energy, even with the lag, that I'm going to be able to make this Hydro Cannon. My opponent realizes I'm there, and they resign the match. Oh, and it turns out we actually have one more battle. Turns out that is not the final one. We see a pretty big Core Breaker on the lead, leading Guzzlord into Vigoroth, although to be fair, Vigoroth is not a terrible matchup for Guzzlord. As we see, Guzzlord outputs a tremendous amount of damage onto this Pokemon. Opponent actually themselves switches out. They send in Annihilate to catch the Crunch. I send in the Shadow for Alligator. For Alligator, firing off the Hydro Cannon. I throw on seven, one before they make the Shadow Ball, and it is charge attack priority. I'm going to commit the shield. This is not enough for Shadow Ball, so I am gonna let it through. But guess what? It's close combat. I get KO'd. I send in the Shadow Charizard. We get the farm down, leaving with energy. And whatever they had in back did not want to see a Shadow Charizard, and they resigned the match. That happened in so many games, where I would just get the energy advantage, shield advantage, Shadow Charizard, and people would just leave, because they had nothing for Charizard. Charizard, basically, unless you have something like a Lantern or a Bastion on, it's just, its energy is absurdly, absurdly threatening, and it's so much fun to play. I know it hasn't seen a lot of play this particular season of Go Battle League, but I still think it's really, really strong. This team in particular, I find very well balanced. Basically, the main core breaker you would find is like a Bastiodon lead would be very, very uncomfortable. Wigglytuff as well would be a little awkward. So if you run into one of those toxic Bastiodon, Wigglytuff, and the Victory Bell teams, that would probably not be amazing for this particular team. But outside of that, I found the team to be extremely flexible. Like Shadow Charizard, it KO'd so many water types. And the Guzzlord, even in matchups where it's not necessarily known for its amazing matchups, like, let's say, a Vigoroth can still output a lot of neutral damage. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you, as always, to our members here on YouTube. The support guys provide is sincerely appreciated. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.